Chain Drug Review and Mass Market Retailers Video Forum. Brought to you by the Emerson Group. Hello, everyone. I'm Jeffrey Wolt, editor in chief of Chain Drug Review and Mass Market Retailers. Welcome to our video forum. Today, we're delighted to bring you the second half of our conversation with Prem Shaw, executive vice president and chief pharmacy officer at CVS Health and co president of CVS Pharmacy. Maybe you can talk a little bit about the broader CVS ecosystem. Obviously, you're involved in a lot of different aspects of healthcare. Where does pharmacy fit into that broader uh, uh, organization? Well, let me start with first, CVS Pharmacy plays an absolute critical role at CVS Health. It serves as a contributor for our overall business, for our financial goals, but it's also the brand ambassador to the company. We have millions of people that walk through our doors every day, and we want to create value for our customers and our patients through innovative, connected ways to deepen our engagement with all of our consumers across all of our CVS health assets. You know, we partner with differentiated business lines to create product solutions. We optimize our fulfillment capabilities. But most importantly, as you think about that local door to healthcare, CVS plays that critical role for, for our own kind of what I'd say is uh, other businesses that we have in our company, but also for our other payers. And, and the way we were expanding that is really by focusing on our physical asset as well as our digital assets. And we think that the digital connectivity in our pharmacies is critical to the future. Um, I personally strongly believe that pharmacy should be a digital first uh, approach, but not a digital only approach. What I mean by that is you, you should connect pharmacy digitally, but you should also have the local means of pharmacy in, in the communities which we serve. Um, you know, what that means is that the digital experience is going to improve the patient experience. It's going to connect better with other parts of the healthcare industries, like the providers. And we've seen this in other industries as well. If you think about the airline industry, for example, you know, it wasn't very long ago that you'd go and get a boarding pass from a machine, you know, before you went through the TSA pre-check line or through the security line. Now you look at your phone, you have your boarding pass on your phone, you go through that line, and then you go and you patiently wait until the phone messages you when you're ready. There's no reason why we can't bring those types of things to pharmacy to make it a much, much more convenient and better experience in, in, ter in terms of that interaction. The second piece is around when you think about our digital tools and how they're critical, uh, they also allow you to track the status of your prescription, right? So think about things that get submitted from electronic health record. We know that the second they get submitted and sent to us, like an ERX, we can inform that to a patient to allow to inform them when that prescription is being ready. We give them the flexibility to change the timing of that prescription. Again, more convenience for the member. But we can also take action. So if you asked, you know, how does this all connect to our other businesses or to payers, we are still able to connect that interaction with, you know, uh, an Aetna member or a Caremark member or one of our other payers to really drive a what I'd say is cohesive approach to managing that patient's care making sure that it's consumer driven, but also has our, our uh, touch points in it. And, and I'd say this, uh, we're at the infancy of this, of this journey around, you know, digitally engaged with our physical infrastructure. And so our goal in one of our, one of my, uh, what I'd say is key metrics that I look at for my team is how to be unleash the power of this digital in integration to create more choice and convenience for patients, improve better healthcare outcomes for patients, and create more meaningful time for our pharmacists to have better interactions in the physical stores when they need it. So this is absolutely key. And, and you know, I wanna just say, digital is never gonna replace the power of a pharmacist. It's just gonna help streamline it and make it better. And our approach to digital will enhance that interaction and experience with their pharmacist while keeping the convenience and taking all the, the bureaucracy out of pharmacy. Mm -hmm. If uh, the digital piece goes as you, project it will, uh, will that mean less people coming into the store? It's absolutely not less people coming into the store. When they do come into our store, though, they'll be much more fully informed. Think about the, the transition of Starbucks, right? It's Starbucks, you know, half the people now today don't even order inside of a Starbucks. They just walk in and grab their coffee. Um, if you think about other industries, that's where it's at. So this is not meant to get people not to come into our store. It's actually the opposite. When they come into our store, we want them to have the absolute best experience, not have to ask someone a basic question when 
that question could be at their fingertips. We want to be able to have those interactions be much more meaningful with our pharmacists and our clinicians so that they're able to answer their questions. But then the base, the easier parts of pharmacy, for example, checking someone out or being able to, uh, you know, inform them where their prescription is. We want to put all of that in the hands of the patient to make that much more seamless. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about the stores. Maybe, maybe you could comment on how you see the rest of the store evolving in light of CVS's emphasis on healthcare, and also how the pharmacy team interacts with over-the-counter medications and perhaps some of the other categories that are sold in a CVS drugstore. Yeah, Jeff, it's a, it's a great question. You know, the, first off, the, the rest of the store and the pharmacy team are one team. We work together every day um, to drive the outcomes of what our patients and consumers need. And so, you know, our pharmacists walk outside of the pharmacy all the time to provide suggestions for over-the-counter me medications or remedies that patients may need. They help them with, you know, whether it's an ankle brace or other things that they may need. So we're very closely connected. As you think about our minute clinics that we have in a lot of our stores and our health hubs, those are other areas in which we connect and provide services for, for patients. Um, and, and we continue to really focus on, I'd say, a few things. One is, as we think about that interaction with the front of the store and the pharmacy, how do we continue to drive it to a better healthcare approach? But first and foremost, how do we make it more convenient, right? Because we don't want to just have a different, uh, another box and still have the same inconvenience, inconvenience of the healthcare kind of in our store. So we, we're trying to think through how do we make it more convenient? How do we connect digitally our stores? How do we have the experiences more connected? A couple of real examples is, for example, if you left a doctor's office in that digital example I gave you, and you needed a prescription and you, you just had flu and you wanted something from the front store. Well, we're connecting our pharmacy digital assets with our front store digital assets so that when you come in, we can have all of that ready for you. So just a bunch of things, what I would say is connecting that consumer experience, but then also thinking about what other services can we provide through Minute Clinic and the Health Hub, where we know that we're in the local communities where this care is needed and that we can leverage our stores for, to provide those services, provide those services. More broadly, uh, how is the interaction these days between physicians and pharmacists? The interaction between pharmacists and physicians still needs to get better. We need to continue to work and become one healthcare system, not separate healthcare systems. And so some of the ways that we're doing that is continuing to connect our pipes into electronic health records so that we can transmit information into their, into their EMR in a way that's seamless. We can also capture information from them in ways that are seamless. And so this is absolutely something that uh, I think our industry needs to get better at. You know, for example, we, we field of millions of calls from physicians and how do we take those calls and eliminate them? How do we transfer information back and forth? We've done, I mean, and let me, let me just recognize the industry because they've done a tremendous job with things like ERX. Uh, 10 years ago, there was only about 25% ERX, or, which are electronic prescriptions mm -hmm. sent from physicians to pharmacies. We're now close to 85% of prescriptions are done through ERX. So we have become very efficient, but I still think there's more to do here. There's more to do around how we interact. There's more to do on how we connect care. There's more to do on even potentially providing services so that a patient doesn't have to wait for their physician. There's something that they may be able to do in their local pharmacy uh, in terms of that data and really providing that back. So I, I think the inter interactions continue to be positive and we have to continue to strive to make them better, right? To, to create the efficiencies across across the system. Are attitudes generational? Do you find that younger physicians are more open to interacting with uh, their, their pharmacy partners than perhaps older doctors? It's not necessarily generational. I think it's really process driven. And if you think about the, the processes that our in individual systems, you know, whether you're a physician or pharmacist have done, they've been centered around um, our respective businesses, right? So our pharmacy processes have been uh, structured around pharmacy. Physician practices are structured around physicians. We have to think about how and can, how to connect these processes so they're one process. Because at the end of the day, both of us are inter interacting with a consumer or a patient, and mm -hmm. we have to think about how those interactions connect to them. And so, you know, what I would say is it's a continued push of the technology, the consumer first approach and how we connect our systems to be better. You guys were a leader in specialty pharmacy, are a leader in specialty pharmacy. Maybe you can talk a little bit about how you've 
integrated uh, specialty with your in-store pharmacy practice? As you know, I, I led the specialty pharmacy business for, for the last 10 years uh, before having the privilege to take this role. So uh, our specialty pharmacy business is connected to our retail business in a few ways. Um, we have a little bit of work to do in a couple of areas. I'll highlight that as well. But the first way that it's really connected is when we were in specialty pharmacy, we realized that uh, patients didn't always want to wait at home for their medications to be delivered to their homes, right? So think about these as very expensive medications that are being delivered through uh, UPS or FedEx. They they are cold chain typically, so they're cold medications. Um, and so they have to get, capture those medications and quickly put them in the refrigerator. Um, so we built a program called Specialty Connect. Specialty Connect really just gives the member the option of either having that prescription delivered to their home or picked up in the store. When we when we started this, we didn't realize how much of a consumer benefit it is to have that optionality for the patient. So half the patients today actually pick up those prescriptions in the store versus at their home, right? So that's a tremendous uh, convenience for members. The other thing it does is it allows us to connect for prescriptions that would sometimes end up in retail that had prior authorization or that were specialty medications, they would get stranded. They wouldn't know how to get those medications with the patients. The retail pharmacies may not have access to those medications. We seamlessly send those prescriptions into our specialty pharmacy to make that uh, experience much, much more seamless and a better interaction for the patient, and then offer them to have that medication picked up back at that store they dropped the prescription off or delivered to their home. So that's the, the second. The third piece that what we need to do more work on is really one digital experience. And so right now we have a specialty pharmacy digital experience and we have a retail pharmacy digital experience. You know, we're looking at ways on how we're gonna evolve that and make that a, a very simple uh, consumer approach to digital that will be consistent across both channels. And that, that will also create more convenience and better outcomes for patients. Mm -hmm. uh, a final question for you. Another area where CVS has been a leader is uh, health equity. Uh, maybe you can talk a little bit about how CVS Pharmacy and CVS Health are addressing those issues. Yeah, health equity is absolutely something that's important for us as a company. And if you think about across the country, we have over 9,000 pharmacy locations and, you know, our pharmacists are always nearby. They're usually there uh, during those more convenient hours, nights, weekends. Uh, and 85% of Americans live within 10 miles of a CVS Pharmacy. And by adding, you know, the types of services I described before, we know that we can make healthcare more convenient and accessible. Um, the second piece around health equity is we know we have pharmacists that are trusted and familiar. So a lot of times in these communities, their pharmacist is the person that uh, these folks stop by uh, and seek counseling for, or you know, come into our stores for some of those OTC products we mentioned earlier. Um, and pharmacists are that most trusted healthcare right, which you need, and they have the most frequent interaction with these patients. Um, so from a health equity perspective, I would say we do a few things. One is we were very deliberate when we launched the COVID vaccine and testing to make sure that we had all uh, aspects of equity covered in where we chose our locations for testing as well as for vaccinations across the country. Um, and we continue to be that front, uh, regardless of if someone has insurance or not for patients to come to, to ask questions for about their medication, if they have a sick child. Um, and, and we want to continue to be uh, a key pivotal part of what I would say is the community by continuing to drive this. And we see these patients more frequently than the doctors. And as I think about um, ways to improve health equity, we have to continue to think about these services we provide in our stores. We have to continue to provide that access, that local community access that we can to all communities. And then we had to continue to make sure that we're doing the simple things, right? Whether it's translation or other things that may, there may be barriers to in the healthcare uh, landscape, continue to break those barriers so that we provide more access and more affordable access to uh, patients in, in all communities that we serve. Correct me if I'm wrong, and, and then I'll stop after this question, I promise. Uh, you guys also are focused on helping consumers in general find the lowest cost option for medication, am I right? That's right. Uh, how is that initiative gone? It's, it's going great. It's one of the ways that we, we believe that we can really help consumers. We know affordability is one of the biggest issues um, in all of healthcare. And so one of the ways that we do that is we high, identify patients that have high out-of-pocket costs, and we can look at other alternative main, means to save those patients money. Um, and we put that in our processes and we offer that to our patients as a means in which 
they can help reduce their out-of-pocket burdens for prescriptions. Um, and it's something that we, we really deem is really important in terms of creating value for, for patients and consumers across, across pharmacy. And you guys are doing some great things, and I thank you for your time today. Thank you, Jeff.